Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. Hello and welcome to Furious Driving and this needs no introduction so I'm not going to bother telling you it's my 2002 Ford Crown Victoria Police Interceptor P71 CVPI which was utterly scammed on because the, I assume the dealer in Ohio, um, yeah, he basically filled the rotten sills with expanding foam and sold me a car which is not roadworthy. However, I've been badger badgering away frantically over the last few videos and we're now looking at the light. We can see the end game for this particular uh, vehicle. Now, off camera, since you last saw me, I have been uh, undercoating that seal repair that you saw last time. I've been doing a little bit of filler work. Um, it's not necessary to fill, I'll show you this in a second, not necessary to fill and cover this seam, which is covered in seam sealer. So it looks a bit grossy, but that is actually seam sealer, not a weld you're looking at now. Um, I've been doing a bit of, I don't know why I did it, but where the plug welds are, I put some filler over them because I thought I'd make it look neat, even though you can barely see them. And I've made my filler work look even worse than the plug welds were. But anyway, that's by the by, because I've been looking at how things are going to go back together. Um, I've got very excited, I got ahead of myself, went and had a can of Ford Aspen Green paint mixed up by, um, what are they called, Kent Paints down in Sandling near Maidstone. Really handy, you go in there, you tell them the paint code, they walk out with an aerosol or a, um, a can of, or a litre or two litres, whatever you need basically. I could have got a giant one, I could have got a small one, I could have got anything. They do small, they do large, they do aerosols, they do by like can. Which is super handy because he's telling the paint code, they mix up what you want. Uh, for the sills, I'm not going to bother getting the uh, spray compressor out and the, the spray gun, I'm just going to Doodly doodle it with the, um, the spray cans because you don't need a full on job there. When it comes to the, the wing, you can see how this is a repaint on this wing already because lined up against this is the original colour of the door and the bonnet, you can see how wrong that paint colour actually looks. It's just too light, so that's not good. But I have temporarily just hung the wing back on just very gently just to have a look at how it all fits back together. So let me show you. I thought it would be useful because I thought it would be useful to go and get that trim piece which covers the bottom of the sill and hides all the terribleness out of the garage to have a look. This also does need a paint I think before it goes back on because this paint looks terrible. I thought it was painted black, it's actually just really rotten paint. Um, this little end piece here slides in and screws on and that fits on just there so that will hide my work quite neatly but I do need to get that smoothed down so it's like a nice <laughs> spider web stuck on me. <laughs> so it's a nice smooth finish down to there. This then slides up underneath where the doors are. And by having that end on there, I can see where that fits. So that will then cover everything but that last sort of centimetre and a half or two centimetres of this little re rebate bit at the bottom. So that's all good. That hides all the nastiness. And incidentally, underneath it, I thought I'd broken all of these, but actually they're not broken. Uh, completely, but I'm gonna email reporter because a couple have snapped. Ah, oh, this one, for example, has snapped. But these, I need to screw into here and onto there. Uh, so I need to figure out exactly how they go back on. I think there is an additional bracket which has vanished because they clip into the bottom of here. I'm not 100% sure how. So I think these fix onto the side of the car and then this panel just snaps onto them. So yeah, there's a little bit of figuring out to happen just there. But this also, with that held up against the side of the car, this also gives me an idea of what I need to be doing to the wing itself. So I can find out what I need to repair. So I probably don't, well, it would be a lot of wasted metal to replace all of this. When I need to put like a finger's width of new metal down on the outside of the front of the wing and the rear uh, panel that you can see through there I think I just need to extend down <laughs> let's drop that down it won't hang on there even with tape it won't hang on this I guess I need to come down to about here and that needs to come down and meet it I will look at some photos on on Rock Auto and other sites just to have a look but yeah I think I'm gonna go for repairing this rather than trying to buy a replacement 
Meanwhile, off camera, I've been busy with, well, do you remember the uh, the rotten battery tray, which actually isn't technically a battery tray because it's it's something else. We don't really know what it is, but it's part of the battery support structure, which had the big hole in it. So I've given it a very, very light coat of uh, skimmer filler when I had some left over from doing the side of the car. Uh, undercoated it, sat in blacked it. And it's not pretty, but it's going to be completely invisible. No one's ever going to see it. So at least it's now rust proofed, so it's not going to rust again. Because looking at this car and a lot of places on it, it does seem like Ford have done the very, very basic level of rust prevention, just like a single coat of, of satin black or grey or something, so they can rust through quite quickly. So let's move on to getting through the cobwebs. It's Halloween coming up, so it's very appropriate. Um, rid of this bolt here, which is the one that we could not undo that holds that battery bracket thing in, um, because it was just rock solid. Now we can access the bottom of it because it's all exposed. Maybe I can crank it out of there, or maybe I can't. The mole grips are just sliding on the thing. That is basically part of the same thing now. They exist as one. Now, someone did ask in a recent video, I think it was about the Mini, the old Mini, if I had a Dremel that would make life easier for getting into little spaces working on that car. And I'd actually forgotten I do have one. I've remembered why I never use a Dremel, it's because it's blooming useless. Ah, finally gone. I'll drill out that hole a bit bigger and use a nut and bolt rather than the original thread in that because the thread is now on the floor in tiny pieces. There we go, and that can then fit back in there like that. Nut and bolt through that end, the original fixing that end. Robert's your father's brother, sorted. But first of all, gonna give this a bit of a clean up. Chassis black. Black, 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 lock me in the basement and feed me on pins. Black like the crows that peck at my soul. Chassis black. Well, it hasn't taken long with a wire brush and then an airline to clean things up. We've got the good metal, we've got the paint that was flaking, and we can give everything a blast over with the uh, um, built hammer stuff because that's super rust proof, rust killing in all the good ways. And I'll fill up these holes with the other the anti rust for the inside as well. We we'll use lots of that on this car. Let's start with the inside stuff. I'm a huge fan of this built hammer stuff. It's Really, really good. Oh, it's dribbling, it's dribbling. There's a hole up here, which I can feed into my new section and absolutely load it. Oh, more holes. Every time I squirt it, it's so runny, I find places where it dribbles out. Into the chassis leg, let's try and put it down that way. Oh, okay, there's some on the outside, that's fine. The more the merrier. That's now all the orifice is done. The trick is to get into every little hole you can find, whack the thing in there and just blat it around until you've got every possible orifice covered. Right, so that is now quite literally running with built hamber, so that should be at least pretty well borderline rust proof for some time to come now. And just in the nick of time, because it is actually starting to rain, so I'm gonna go inside at this point. Not gonna do any green today, in the rain. Right, so yesterday we had a brief interlude in the extreme wind and rain, which is the UK at the moment. And so I managed to use the, I think it's actually a two pack, paint the green is actually a really good color match from Kent paint so the sill is now looking good lacquered over it afterwards looks lovely I wasn't actually too concerned about how the finish looked on this bit because this is God, that's, that's loud when that slams shut <laughs> this is all going to be uh, hidden by the plastic trim just nice to have it sort of properly rust proof by and out to paint the only bit I was really concerned about was this area here um, because that's going to be the only bits that's visible of course this arch is bubbling so and later on that's not mission creep this right now but at a soon to be later date or a later date that's going to be soon we need to go and sand all this back sort this out as well so we've now got an exterior which looks fantastic so before we do anything else on the front fender the front wing let's go and load this up with uh, cavity wax so we don't get any more future rust and try and get it into the areas that make it and try and get it in between the two layers. 
So I'm going back in with the old Built Hamber Dynax S50, which is a tried and tested, brilliant cavity wax. And with this long schnozzle, I can get this right inside there. Oh, I can see stuff falling out already, cracky. Very runny, I need some cardboard. Right, so now I've got some, some drip catching cardboard. This stuff is actually unparalleled for discovering where there are small holes in the, uh, the structure of a car because as soon as you start squirting it anywhere inside, it will fall out of the car. But I wanted to do this after the paint had dried because this kind of waxy oily stuff will stop paint from sticking to uh, the metal. I want this to be flooded with the stuff. Oop, that's running out quite fast. That's even running out over there, shows how far it travels. And there was a little gap. Where did I leave? I intentionally left a little gap in here. I can't get through there, that didn't work out well. So the idea being that I could run it all the way around because I want this to be so, so full of anti-rust paint. But I never have to do this again. Uh, my axle stands are very rust proof now. Mm. Why well, I do that with a non gloved hand? That was silly. And to finish this side off, the frame rail just behind there, the big solid truck rail that makes this car what it is, was also looking pretty grim. So I've just buzzed off with the uh, D20 wire, wire brush. Um, and I'm gonna go on the inside edges, first of all, drop it off the jacks and then do the entire rail with lots more Dynax UB, which is the black version of the anti-corrosion racks, which I've done the Punto, oh, done with. Yeah, I've done the Punto recently with it. Should have done something else recently as well. This stuff is lovely. Yeah, finally, this thing will be back on its wheels. I can stop making the place look like an unpleasant area to live. Oops. Up inside those cavities as well. Right, there we go. Once again, we've got a rust-proof drive because that's not gonna corrode that tarmac anytime soon. We've got actual stalactites of, um, of under seal. I will go and do a couple more layers. You can't do it all in one go. You can't do a one big thick layer. You need a couple of thin layers. Otherwise, it just, it just runs off. So we'll go back shortly, give it a bit more. But basically, as the rain starts to fall now, we've got a car not only back on its wheels, but rust-proof and solid. So that side is completely done and finished, apart from one more coat of under seal. Now we're gonna move on to the wing which is gonna be fun to do in this rain, but I'm gonna be repairing the wings because by doing that fix, I'm gonna be saving something like 1,200 pounds, which is an insane amount of money for what's hopefully not gonna to be too big of a repair. In America, you can pick these wings up for like $120 brand new, probably about $50 in a junkyard. It's just the shipping, getting over to this country is ridiculous. So let's go and try and find somewhere, not in the rain, <laughs> hopeful, to go and try these things fixed. Right now, we have here the actual wing itself, which is thick, thick with filler, I tell you, in the area that was, well, still is partly made of expanding foam, um, with filler and, well, black, thick black textured under sealy stone chip stuff, so you can really not see anything from underneath there. So let's get this ground off and take it, we'll grind it back to this little swage line here. But hard to do while it's off the car is to work out an accurate line of where the bottom of the outside is going to be and follow this line back. So I'm going to put this back onto the car and then put this out a bit on afterwards. <laughs> Well, it's not that bad from that far up, kind of. Right, let's get the blade out and try and trim us back to something that resembles a straight line. Mm. Genuine Ohio foam. Well, that's 
it's actually relatively square there now, so I'm making it easy to repair once it's back on the car. And I've left this little line just here, which is at the curved edge that came from the factory. So let's just trim this off a little bit. Right, here we go. So we've now got a nice clean edge. We've taken off what was turned out to be quite a lot more rusty stuff down there. So a straight edge just there. Taking this down to straight edge-ish. Uh, but it's just back to as clean a metal as we can get. Also, there's a few sort of rusty patches down here. This wouldn't be a furious driving video without unexpected rust in the bagging area. So, discovered the crusty hole just there. Uh, took off some rusty flakes of paint just there so I can rust proof that. They'll be hidden behind the wing again soon. And this little blister up here, I thought I'd take a look at it. There's more just there to look at. Um, I discovered lots more filler, in fact. Uh, the camera wasn't rolling, but yeah, suddenly got a big puff of white powder. So this wasn't like some Colombians came to visit. It was a whole bunch more filler that had been used to fill in a little hole just here, which has undoubtedly got far worse in the year or so since it was done. I know it is absolutely horrible taking a grinder to apparently nice paint, but you can't leave it. Right, here we go. So we've got a whole bunch of MDS uh, Bulldog people, rust neutralizing primer on there to both kill the rust that's underneath there and coat it and stop it rusting anymore. Down here at the front, which is gonna be hidden by the bumper up here, also hidden by the bumper. This area is gonna need a fair bit of attention with the green paint. And of course down here, which, well, I'm not quite sure exactly what to do with this little area down here, because well, I don't know how visible it's gonna be. I might just leave this as it is, because it's a nice square edge now that's not gonna rot. Anything else is just purely gonna be cosmetic, but hidden. And um, yeah, just concentrate on putting a nice front square corner whoops, corner on there <laughs> once it's on the car. So yeah, anyway, let's drive for the moment without hopefully any more uh, fingerprints put into it. Okay, so I have taken a look at the Rock Auto site and the shape of these things and how they are meant to look. And there should be a bit that comes down all the way to actually bolt on to this panel, which I created down here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's done fine without it for the last year, so I'm kind of wondering, do I need to do that? Because it's a weird shape. And the other thing is, because I haven't got anything to work from here, I'm not really sure where to take it to. So I think I want to refit this to the car and then decide what to do, because I've got no reference point. I've got no, no plans to work from, so I'm going completely blind. So I don't know if I can actually fit this to my, on my own, or if I probably need to go and get Chris to come back. And this is a two-handed job, so I don't destroy anything while we're underneath there. It's never easy. And there are about a thousand asides and while you're there kind of jobs while I've got this thing apart before the seat goes back in. So I can actually now put this passenger seat back in. I'm going to give these runners a quick clean up because they were looking particularly unpleasant. And obviously this should have been a warning sign when I saw the state of these um, <coughs> when I was detailing the car when I first got it. Can't go wrong with a bit of VHT rust neutralizer that's uh, not painted. This is just bare metal under the car. There's ridiculous decisions by Ford, I guess, to save money. Right, it's a couple of hours later. Chris unfortunately couldn't make it over to help because he's busy with so-called work and customers. I don't know, some people. So anyway, I've managed to manhandle this on here, but with just the use of a quarter inch ratchet wrench, a 10 and an eight millimeter socket, I've got this thing back on the car and it's actually lined up really quite well. Even the door opens and closes without scraping and the bonnet goes up and down on its um, hydraulic ram again. So massively good, happy, happy times. It actually went together surprisingly easily. There is a ridiculous number of fixings holding this uh, wing to the car, but then it is both the inner and the outer wing all in one. What I have done though is lost the two 13 millimeter bolts which hold the wing up to the scuttle just here. They will turn up, they'll be somewhere. Um, and I do think the inner wing is gonna be significantly harder to put together than the outer wing, the uh, plastic trim with all the wires clipped to it. Now, I would like to get the inner wing refitted as well. For two reasons, partly for completeness, partly so I can attach the battery and actually move the car again, which would be fabulous. But I don't want to for two reasons. But firstly, because it's gonna be down there in the welding zone and might get melted. Secondly, I can't find it. I think it's in the boot and the boot needs the battery to unlock it to, yeah. We'll come back to that soon though. Now, having seen how this rests up against here. I don't think we specifically or particularly need to do anything with this inner area here. 
Now I can see it all mounted up to the car. There's no movement in it, no flop, no wiggle. So I don't think we need to bother messing around with this thing. It would carry on around there and bolt onto that bit. It's a convoluted, irritating shape. We don't need that kind of stress in our lives. What we do need though is this panel here, which will finish off in a straight line just there with a plastic trim. So we'll do like a little joddle to put behind it and then that will just close up underneath there. That's all fine. And so, time for some more cardboard aided design, I think. So jumping out here between spells of rain, and this is all nicely uh, prepared with undercoat and stuff. I'm not worried about the finish of this wing in terms of paint and all the rest of it, because this entire panel is gonna have to be properly professionally painted as soon as I'm done. So this doesn't really matter. What does matter though, is getting a nice straight line along here oops, and along there, which is kind of important because the neater we get this, the neater we get our finished article and this is going to be kind of tricky because this is not well not there for one thing it curves so it's going to, have to fold around there on a curve which is going to be great fun and then what on earth is this angle here going to be yeah i need a ruler of some kind the angle that's the thing the angle Hold that, oh damn it. I need another nine hands. Tape, tape's what I need, obviously. Right, so now this is taped in place as securely as it's ever likely to be. So run that across the bottom of the door. Thought I got it completely wrong, but that is actually about right. Bear in mind the panel gaps on these things are pretty dreadful anyway. I'm sure that's fine. And what I'll do is, I'll, like before, I'll come down like a half a centimetre from that and joddle it so I've got a, a rebate behind the plastic panel. Genius. Right, good. Let's get some cutting out done. Right, so that is now cut out and I've brushed off the uh, surface for us that are starting to form on there. So are these D20, what do you call them? Just power tools, just so convenient. Head over to the Amazon affiliate store to find those. Now I'm gonna joddle this over so that this panel has now got a little rebate, just like we did on the, um, on the sill length. Hopefully it's in the right place. Yeah, pretty much. Right, so now we've got a shape, we've got a little joddled bottom on it, we've got a fold over bit on the side, it all seems to fit quite neatly actually. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna put some weld through primer on that, let that dry and then zap it on there. Hurrah! Here we go, this should be the last bit of welding we do on this side of the car. So this is now clamped sort of in place. These are quite handy little brackets I got from Whiteland Restoration the other day um, and they hold it exactly the right distance apart apparently and should make it nice and easy to clamp it all together and then well that's turned really down low I just noticed that um, last bit of wording I was quite thin I think about four and a half of this depth of, of metal. Now fortunately I do actually want to make a nice job of this one because it's visible, which is a bit of a shame. I'm also going to have to do a bit of pressing in down here for the first welds until it's all... awkwardly the uh, bit that goes in the back of that is still inside there somewhere
Right, so there we go, in the harsh light of a couple of uh, little cob lights, that's actually not a bad repair. I mean, it looks really quite smooth. Yeah, I'm actually really quite pleased with that. All I need to do now, once I've put the inner wing of the battery back on there, is repeat that down the entire length of the rear wing of that W123. Anyway, yeah, so just a little bit of skimmer filler, because I've got a little tiny hole just there, and a few little slightly rough edges. Undercoat it, fill it, and rub it to your father's brother. We've got ourselves a finished wing that didn't cost me a thousand pounds. Result! Hurrah! Because that is the big problem I've been facing, is that I don't want to spend a grand on wings, and basically that is now good enough. I mean, honestly, that is absolutely fine. I was thinking about putting another bit of metal on the bottom of there and boxing it in and closing it up, but really, I don't think I do. I think all I'm going to do now is fill and paint this thing, and then take it down to a body shop once it's repaired and MOT'd, get the body shop to paint the front wing in complete completeness, I think is the word I'm looking for, and then that'll all be fine. I'll skim that with filler now, a bit of green on that in the morning, and it's good enough for the MOT. And we are now done. What we've got to do now is repeat absolutely everything we've done this side on the other side. The question now is, of course, do I give you regular updates on everything as I do it on that side of the car, or do I just do big chunks of it and show you as it's done? Because hopefully, now that I've had all the experience of doing this side and you know, I've invested in a few extra tools and a lot more experience, as I say, hopefully it will not be too big of a task, it's not too scary, and we can just whistle through it, and it'll only take a couple of weeks, <laughs> and the car will be MOT'd and running again before the end of the year, with a little bit of luck. So yeah, let me know if you'd like to see all of the effort going into this, or just want to see it done, and concentrate on other things in the videos. Let me know. Anyway, so this is now done for the moment. Now, obviously I said I wasn't worried about how this looked, and so I was just going to quickly skim it over with undercoat and leave it and get the body shop to sort out all the final finish. So naturally I'm now four skims of filler trying to get the perfect finish on this, which is completely wasting time! Why do I do this to myself? I just can't leave things alone sometimes. So anyway, this is now done. We've got a solid wing finishing touch to this solid side. So now all I've got to do is repeat absolutely everything on the other side. As I just said a moment ago on the video, but in fact yesterday in real life, do you want to watch me go through all of this over again? Are you interested in watching all the cutting and grinding and welding and every step of the way? Or do you just want to see it in about a month when I go, hey, it's done? The thing is, because if I don't do an update every week or two, I do get lots of comments saying, what's happening with the Crown Vic? And the answer is, well, I'm waiting for it to stop raining so I can get out and do some more work on it, which is generally what's going on with the Crown Vic. Unfortunately, this work does just show how badly bodged and abused this car was. It's a lovely car that looks like it's been well cared for, but the Ohio climate has been an absolute rust belt nightmare. And so the little bubbles of rust I'm seeing on the rear wheel arch on this side, I'm suspecting you're gonna do an awful lot more nasty things when I grind into them later on as well. So I think this might be just dumped on a body shop in the early part of next year. Maybe not full circle in Marden because they are very good, but they've got the 420 Tour at the moment. They've got the Punto booked in for when that comes back. And this 200 VI, which you can't see off camera, is due to go there as well. So they've got a long old queue of work waiting in the wings. So maybe I'll find somewhere else to take this one just because I want to get through the work. But there we go. Maybe I will, maybe just dump it on them as well and they can just make it their problem for a while. <laughs> It'll solve my parking issues, if nothing else. Right, thank you for watching. Please do like, please do subscribe if you've made it this far into the video. I do appreciate you watching it. I do appreciate your support and your love of this car because I adore this thing and I cannot wait to get it back on the road and be driving it again because that's why I bought it. I didn't want a big lawn ornament. I wanted a Crown Vic I could drive around in. And I've been missing that. So right, so I'm gonna finish up now and move on to another car because other things are waiting as well and then get this thing finished. Oh, it's too much to do. Thanks for watching, goodbye. Mm -hmm.